internet how are you doing today my name is Jackie and welcome back to my YouTube channel so I'm back in Pennsylvania this weekend and this is going to be a vlog where I read Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire for the first time I only started reading Harry Potter last year I never read them as a kid I know I know that is a failing on my part but now I am going to do an entire vlog where I read Goblet of Fire for the first time and let you guys know my thoughts there will be spoilers obviously I'm sorry that I don't have a vlog for the first two books on this channel I do have a vlog where I read Prisoner of Azkaban and I'm going to leave that down below if you want to see that that was my favorite one of the books so far and this one looks like quite a hefty tome. It seems substantially larger than the previous ones, but I'm excited to read it and share my thoughts with you guys. So that's what this vlog is gonna be about. Hope you enjoy. <laughs> I have to say, I just absolutely love the Weasleys. Every single one of them, they are all fantastic. I love Mr. Weasley showing up at the Dursley's house and just being fascinated by all the muggle technology, like electricity. Ooh, did you know that I have a collection of batteries? Motley thinks it's weird, but I just think it's fascinating stuff. I love him. He is so precious, too good for this world. It was also cool, I don't think Charlie Weasley ever actually appears in any of the movies, so it was cool to have him mentioned, even if only for a moment I identify him, because if I lived in the Wolsden world, I too would totally prefer dragons to real people and just piss off to go hang out with dragons all the time. I identify with that. <laughs> So I'm also already emotional about Cedric Diggory and he's basically only said hi so far. But I'm already emotional about my fellow Hufflepuff who's too good for this world. I also have been so obsessed with dragon stories ever since I watched Game of Thrones. So as a newcomer to the fantasy genre, if you know any really cool fantasy books that involve dragons, totally leave them in the comments as recommendations for me. I'm very interested to read them or any other cool magical creatures or magic systems in fantasy that you think I should definitely check out. I am a newcomer to the fantasy genre. I didn't even read Harry Potter until I was an adult because I thought I didn't like fantasy. So if you have any good recommendations, please let me know. I am very eager. Day back to Florida. I'm on page 145 of Goblet of Fire, and honestly, I don't have that much to say so far. I'm almost 150 pages in, and we haven't even gotten to Hogwarts yet. Um, not to say that I am disliking it, I just feel like we haven't really gotten deep into the main plot yet, so I don't have that much to say. Wondering how Victor Crumb is a professional Quidditch player when he hasn't even finished at um, what's it called, Durmstrang yet. He's 18 and he's playing professional sports, but you know, good for him. He must be like the world's best Quidditch player. Um, anyway, so yeah, I'm flying back to Florida. My goal, if I could read 200 pages on the plane, that would be fantastic. Don't know if that's a realistic goal, so... I'll say my goal is 150. If I can double where I am right now, that would be fantastic. So I'll update you guys when I'm back in Florida. So guys, I am back home in Florida and I am so happy because on the plane, I achieved my goal. I got up to page 385 I think so just a quick overview of what happened in all the pages I read well I'm excited because we finally got to Hogwarts and obviously we're getting to the Triwizard Tournament which is one of the main plot elements of this book and 
Harry, who's a 14-year-old, when this should only be for kids 17 and up, which I still object to the logic of being like, we can totally put teenage wizards in a life and death situation, but I digress. Ends up having his name coming out of the goblet, and now he has to compete, <laughs> even though he didn't enter himself. And um, the biggest and uh, one of the most controversial book to movie changes. Harry, did you put your name in the Goblet of Fire? Dumbledore asked calmly, which in the movie turns into, Harry, did you put your name in the Goblet of Fire? Um, yeah, I really need to rewatch that movie. I just watched Prisoner of Azkaban like two weeks ago because it was on TV and I missed Goblet of Fire. And then I ended up watching Order of the Phoenix, which I haven't read that book yet. And I think that was the last one of the movies I watched before I just got confused and lost interest. So I really would like to see this movie again after I finish the book and see how it compares because this is a big book and I know they cut stuff out. I already think there are some things in here that I just had no memory of in the movie so they totally got cut out. The whole thing with uh, Winky, the Crouch's um, house elf, I really don't... I don't think Do like Dobby... I don't know what Dobby was doing in the movies after Chamber of Secrets. I feel like he like just kind of doesn't become a thing anymore. They just cut out this whole thing about Dobby working at Hogwarts. Oh, and I love how Hermione is trying to advocate for the house elves. Like, oh, I love Hermione. She's great. And I know that, you know, Harry and Ron kind of think it's dumb that she's creating spew, but you know, I'm very sympathetic to her cause. I just love Hermione. She's one of my favorite characters, but I mean, Hermione's one of everyone's favorite characters, right? Like, how do you not like Hermione? I love my fellow Hufflepuff Cedric Diggory. He is such a good human. So good, so pure. And this he's basically being upstaged by Harry, who wasn't even supposed to compete in this tournament. And he's just taking it totally fine and telling other kids not to make fun of Harry. And then Harry does the right thing, telling him about the dragons because he realized that Cedric's gonna be the only one who doesn't know. Oh, Harry did a really nice thing there. I'm so proud of him. And <laughs> It's like ridiculously unfair that the kids all have to face off against different dragons and Harry ends up drawing the most dangerous one. I get that you should have four separate dragons because you don't want to have them face the same dragon four times because then that's going to give the person who goes first an advantage I guess because the dragon's probably going to get more and more pissed off each time a kid tries to take one of their eggs but they could have at least gotten four of the same species of dragon so they all have the same difficulty level. You know what I mean? This is just not a fair competition whatsoever. Uh, what else was I gonna say? I had another comment, I just lost it. Oh, this is making me think about a Harry Potter musical where Darren Chris is singing to the dragon. Yeah, I watched a Harry Potter musical before I read the Harry Potter series. That's because in middle school I was the number one Glee fan and I was in love with Darren Chris. He responded to me once on Twitter when I was in middle school and I told literally everyone that I knew. <laughs> that was my first fandom. While all the rest of you guys were reading Harry Potter, that's what I was wasting my life doing. <laughs> I'm sad. Anyways, I am really enjoying this book so far. I am really liking now that we're getting into the deeper main plot. There is some really interesting stuff going on here and I'm proud of myself for how much progress I've made in such a short amount of time. I am excited to continue reading it, but right now I am tired and I'm ready to go to bed. So I will talk to you guys soon with another reading update. Ron is so jealous of Hermione going to the Yule Ball with Victor Crumb. I mean, I really do like Ron and Hermione as a potential couple because obviously nothing has happened between them at this point. Though I actually do think it's really sweet that Victor Crumb, who has all these female admirers, took Hermione to the ball because we're constantly being told in the narrative that Hermione is not the physically most beautiful girl at Hogwarts, but Victor Crumb, who could have any girl there, is genuinely interested in her because of her personality, even if he can't pronounce her name. So that that is actually really sweet, in my opinion. Meanwhile, Harry hates Cedric again because Cedric is dating Cho Chang. And when Cedric gives him a clue to help him open the egg, he decides that he's going to procrastinate for another month and not do it out of spite. <laughs> Boys. Okay, but I have another question. So these kids from Durmstrang and 
bow battens. Are they still like having classes even though they're here? I know they only said they took maybe like a dozen kids from each school they thought were shortlisted to be champions. But like did they bring a professor along to teach these dozen kids? Because like this is still a school year and they're not at school. So are they still learning or did they all just get like a free pass? I feel like they must have brought a professor or something, right? Like, I don't know. Also, what is Ludo Bagman's deal? Was he in the movie? Because if he was, I don't remember him at all. But I also haven't watched the movie since I was probably 13. So I wouldn't be surprised if he was in it and I don't remember. I don't really know, like, exactly what his endgame here is. Is he a Death Eater? I don't know. Also, I still hate Draco. Maybe he'll get better, but right now he is a bully and he is just the things he says about people is just inexcusable. The things he say to Hermione, calling her the wizarding world equivalent of a racial slur, calling Hagrid a half breed because he is half giant. I mean, I get that he's only 14, but it's also like at some point he needs to start thinking for himself and to realize that maybe the things his parents taught him were wrong. So that's what I'm thinking right now. We'll update you guys tomorrow. I have to say that already knowing the twist coming at the end of this book, because I've seen the movie, I think it is really great this detail here where Harry sees Bartimus Crouch on the Marauders map, so he thinks that Barty Crouch Sr. is sneaking into Hogwarts. But I have a sinking suspicion that this is actually Barty Crouch Jr., who I know is actually Mad Eye Moody, but who Harry doesn't know. So I think that's actually a really cool piece of foreshadowing that you probably wouldn't realize is foreshadowing if you didn't know the ending. I do still have some questions. What's Ludo Bagman's deal? Is Barty Crouch Sr. just like dead in the woods at this point? Like has he been dead for months and just nobody realizes? Um, I think it's kind of funny how Sirius is telling Harry, Ron, and Hermione to refer to him as Snuffles because he's in disguise in his dog Animagus form. And I'm just wondering if there was ever a night back when he and the Marauders were at Hogwarts where he just, in his Animagus form, like slept in front of the Gryffindor common room fireplace and let Remus like rub his tummy or something. <laughs> Like, oh, who's a good boy, Sirius? Who's a good boy? <laughs> so I'm really enjoying this so far, actually. I mean, I know I complained a little bit that it was a slow start, but overall, I think this is really enjoyable and I really like it so far. I am. <laughs> I still think that uh, Hogwarts's teaching practices are a little bit questionable considering they keep putting their students' lives in danger, including uh, Fleur's eight-year-old sister. <laughs> And I know Ron was like, oh, Dumbledore would have never let any of us die or anything, but I'm still like, oh, trapping a bunch of underage children underwater for hours. You better hope that your spell is effective. <laughs> Going to Hogwarts puts you in a lot of life and death situations. I really hope that my yellow nail polish can remain largely intact for a few more days because on Wednesday my mom and I are actually going on a trip to Universal. So we're going to go to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter which is so exciting and I have a Hufflepuff shirt that I'm wearing for the occasion so my nails will match and my mom who was sorted into Gryffindor on Pottermore has a Gryffindor shirt and she got her nails painted red which we actually didn't even plan our nail colors like this. It was just a happy accident so I hope they will still look good to go with my outfit. Okay.
came to the Hogwarts to support Harry during the third task because he doesn't have any family. It's so sweet. Thank God for the Weasleys. <laughs> So everyone, I finished Goblet of Fire and I know that when I was reading this book, I nitpicked some things, I made some jokes, uh, but in all honesty, I think this book was amazing. This is easily a five star read for me. I can't believe that I read this over 700 page book in six days, but I just thought the plot was so good. And this book was so engrossing that it was really easy to fly through despite its daunting length. And I think that the way that the plot came together in the end was done beautifully. I think there was so much effective foreshadowing in this book that I really enjoyed. I knew the ending of this book for the most part because I had seen the Goblet of Fire movie when I was younger. But even knowing that Barty Crouch Jr. was really Mad-Eye Moody, there were still intricate pieces of foreshadowing that went over my head, like how Barty Crouch gave Neville this book that he knew was going to help Harry in the second task of the Triwizard Tournament. I didn't even pick up on that. And I think details like that are just so amazing to see. I also loved this detail about how Rita Skeeter is finding out her pieces of intel, and that's because she is actually a beetle animagus, but she is not registered with the Ministry of Magic. And that was something that I didn't see coming, but in retrospect, that revelation was set up by the plot talking about Animagus forms and how they have to be registered and this continual subplot of well how is Rita Skeeter finding out these things so that was really cool and I love that Hermione is keeping Beetle Rita in a glass jar. Hermione is iconic. I definitely still think Hogwarts is totally not the safest place to go to school and I don't think this Ludo Bagman subplot was really necessary. I don't think it added that much to the story. So I totally understand why the movies cut that out. I don't really think it was needed. I think the story is perf would have been perfectly as good without that subplot in it. However, overall, I, I did really love this. I thought it was fantastic. Honestly, when I first started reading the Harry Potter series last year, I liked books one and two. I thought they were good, but I really didn't love them as much as everyone else did. And for a time, I just thought that maybe I had missed my chance and that I was never going to love Harry Potter, that because I didn't read it when I was younger, I missed out. And I was never going to enjoy the series as much as other people did. But reading Prisoner of Azkaban and now Goblet of Fire, I just think those are both phenomenal books. And now I feel like I finally get it. Like I'm now really, really into this. I love the characters. I love the world. I get emotional reading these books. I think they have great plot development and plot twists. So I think I finally get it. I mean, I liked the first two books, don't get me wrong. I thought they were both really good. But the past two books, I've actively loved and I am really excited to see where the story continues where we're gonna go next um we're getting to a point where I don't remember as much because Order of the Phoenix was the last movie I watched I think I kind of got confused when I was younger watching that I actually did watch Deathly Hallows part two though because when it came out in theaters my mom couldn't find anyone to go with so she made me go with her and I was very confused I had no idea what the hell was going on because I hadn't seen uh Half-Blood Prince or Deathly Owls Part 1. So I definitely do know a lot of spoilers just from seeing people talk about Harry Potter and the role it has in our culture, but I am really excited to experience the rest of the books for myself and I'm really excited to see where it goes, to see what surprises it has in store. Because even though I've seen some of the movies and even though I've seen spoilers, there are going to be a lot of things that didn't make it into the movies or that I don't know about and I'm really excited to experience the rest of the series.
So guys, that is it for my Goblet of Fire reading vlog. I hope you enjoyed. If you want to see me do a reading vlog for Order of the Phoenix and beyond, please like this video to let me know that you enjoyed and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more from me. Thank you so much for watching. My social media links are down below if you want to be my friend on Goodreads or follow me on Tumblr. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye and we hope to see you in the next video. Music